Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. A uh, qu couple quick updates. Uh, if you haven't seen the news today, the uh, hotel group out of Ohio that have been proposing to build a hotel on College Hill is back before the city of Providence. That is right on uh, Angel and Brook Street that they're looking to build that uh, first on College Hill Hotel. Uh, they've been shot down by the city last November and they are back with a smaller proposal, uh, obviously as hot a spot as you could have for a hotel, even with the hotel and hospitality industry down. That is right in the middle of Brown's campus and adjacent to Rhode Island School of Design. Take a look at that as well. Obviously it's Friday. Please check out who's hot and who's not. Uh, always a weekly favorite. And today's schedule, Dr. Michael Fine will be with us at 12 noon and Governor Raimondo will have a press event at one o'clock and we'll have that live here on Go Local. Let's go to Balzano, Italy, our favorite trip of the week around the world to uh, Rebecca Cotto de Silva. Rebecca, how are you today? I'm very well, thanks. How are you doing? So lots of things are going on here. Some of the states, bigger states, Texas, California, Utah, Florida, uh, are seeing significant spikes in the number of new cases as those states re uh, remove their restrictions and begin to get back to normal. Uh, some of the numbers are quite worrisome in the state of Arizona. They've had 15, 1,600 new cases a day. I, I want to say for the last four out of five days. Um, how are things, you guys are ahead of us. We look to you for information and data. Um, you're ahead of us. You've been open longer than we have here. Are you seeing increases in cases? In our province, not so much. And um, we're actually going to really see how much the masks matter, I think, because the mask rule was more or less done away with on June 9th. So now, um, so we had this two meter rule before, now it's a one meter rule. And if you are within one meter of someone inside or outside, before it was outside, and if you were inside, you had to wear a mask. So now it's, if you're within a meter of someone, um, inside or outside, you have to have a face protection, basically protect them from you breathing on them. And then okay. if you're in a situation like being in a restaurant or where you're going to have prolonged exposure to someone who's working there, that person wears a visor and then the client or patient wears a mask. And um, otherwise, you're really not um, having to wear one. So you, it's pretty prudent to carry it out. A lot of people will wear it on their wrist or their elbow. Um, and I, I went down to the city yesterday and I saw, I mean, it was so sweet. You know, kids were playing. It was like life was really back to normal. A couple people had masks, but it was very different from anything we've seen all year pretty much because it was too cold to play like that before. And we'll see what happens because we've been pretty strict on the masks. We've had a two meter rule, six feet, pretty much the same thing. Um, that went away on June 9th. So in a week or so, if our infections go up, then I think that's pretty suggestive of the utility of the mask and of being strict with it. If our infections don't go up, then, you know, I guess I'll translate the, the rules that we have here for you guys. <laughs> um, uh, the one thing probably Dr. Fine says that he feels strongly is the mask. He thinks that's the only effective tool to curtail the spread of the virus. And as he warns, you know, daily, uh, we may change our behavior one way or another, but the virus hasn't gone away. The number of global cases on a daily basis are higher now than ever before. While certainly in Italy, the number of cases in much of uh, Western Europe has decreased. Uh, and in some states in the United States, uh, we're seeing an explosion. I want to say it's around 15 or 16 are seeing increases right now in the overall number of cases. Um, do you think Italy, I understand that the, the restriction was dropped. Do you think that was well-timed or was that too early? 
Well, that's in our province. So the rest of Italy is going to have different rules. So, for example, um, now we can go... Before, you had to keep, keep the one-meter rule in a car, which meant that you could basically only hitch a ride in the back passenger seat in an SUV or, or a van or something. Now it's just a mask rule if you're in a car with someone that you don't live with. Um, but that says within the province, which tells me that, you know, the rest of Italy's got still stricter rules. Um, I believe a lot of the rules are going to be province by province because, because of what happened here, where we opened up the economy against the, the center, central government and we said no, uh, you know, we're opening, forget it. And and then it was the central government a couple weeks later was like, well, it's really on the local governments and we're going to give a little bit of advice. So, yeah, the, the mask rule is us. So just look for Auto Adige Sutural um, to see, you know, if our numbers go up. I believe everyone else has stricter rules in place still. Um, what are the other changes that have taken place in the recent week uh, in Italy? What's the behavioral change? And what's the attitude of Italians? So the, I mean, really what we saw, what I saw yesterday was just incredible. It was like almost nothing. I mean, so few people were wearing masks. It was really incredible. And that's, that's the new rule. One thing, one place you are supposed to wear it is on public transportation and people were really violating that. So I would expect to see some, uh, citations handed out on public transportation, or they just really don't care and they're not even going to do any checks. But I, I think they will because if, in, especially if we start to see a spike in numbers, we're going to see uh, people enforcing the rules that still do exist. But in terms of behavior change, one thing that's kind of big is that if you look at the newspaper now, it's not like coronavirus this, coronavirus that, uh, or all about Conte. Now it's, uh, it, and it started with the, um, that woman coming home, I forget, she, I, I don't know if she was, I, I don't know the story behind it, but then there was um, some uproar because I believe she was being held somewhere and she was returned to Italy and then everyone was upset that she had converted to Islam. And that was the first time you really saw anybody um, and, and, you know, it, it, it was disappointing to me to see that they were, like the first thing that people were reporting on besides coronavirus was disparaging someone's religious choice. I was like, really? <laughs> that's, that's the do first you, thing to make. Do you think the government is just worn out and they are giving up? It's possible. Um, because so what, what you see now is like in the newspaper, it's everything but coronavirus. You've got to scroll down for it. Conte yesterday apparently spoke for three hours, um, but as I said last week, Salvini threatened to dissolve the government, and um, and so I do think that the central government is is focusing more on, you know, Austria, please open your border, uh, let's get a European consensus on when other borders should open. Um, I think Austria decided July 4th. So I think that the central government has gone from, and there's Olympia, hi Olympia. <laughs> Welcome yeah. special guest star. Yes, she's, uh -huh. she finishes school on Monday, so she's a bit more relaxed than usual. <laughs> and, um, and so, yeah, the, I think that the central government has gone more to focus on international relations because the local governments have said we're doing this. As to whether the local governments have given up, I don't think that they have. I think that, you know, our stance here is we've got this under control, personal responsibility. Um, and then there are going to be other places that say, you know, if you're coming from this place, you've got to do this. If you're, you know, um, if you're coming from Milan, like for example, the Milan to Bolzano train will start again on June 14th. So next, next Friday or something. No, next, uh, I don't know. I can't count anymore. <laughs> what are we on the 12th? Uh, Sunday. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, 
You know, I think the local governments are on it, and the central government is has backed off a little bit. But spike in infections happens. I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, have you? Uh, is Olympia there? She is. Have you broken into her that there's going to be school all summer long? Does she, is she aware of that? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'm sure she's not pleased no with that question. Yeah, no school. no school in the summer. No school in the summer. Will Italy, will, Italy, no, hey. will Italy this summer look like Italy in previous summers? We don't know because one of the biggest things, as you know, in Italy is, is the tourists. And it's, um, there. You know, I've heard Austria says that Italians or the, they'll open the border on July 4th. There's no consensus on people from outside of Europe, I don't think, at this point. I think the EU is urging July 1st, but is it July 1st for everybody? Is it July 1st for people with this level of infection index? What is it July for? What, is, what does July 1st mean? So yeah. it's not going to look the same. They do have distancing rules in place. And We'll see what it looks like. Um, I've heard, you know, and it's hard to know what's official and what's not official. There are some people who are saying, no, it, you know, pretty much you're going to have a European uh, summer. Europeans are going to have a European summer. But I don't know. But I mean, right now, as I said in past weeks, it's like, would you let someone in whose country has an, a spiraling infection rate if you? did so much to control your own coronavirus outbreak. And I'm not sure that that's economically a smart choice in the long run, even if it might bring some tourist dollars in. Right. So th think about it. A third of the United States now has increasing number of cases, increasing number of hospitalizations, uh, significant health care concerns. Will this be the American list summer in Italy? You know, it's really hard to say, but if they are guided by numbers. I don't see how you could let Americans in unless you went state by state. And I'm not sure that anyone's really willing to do that to the U.S. because we are, you know, the U.S. is one government and it sets its foreign policy. The states don't set its foreign policy. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if, if. <laughs> No, I, li I like to see it. I like okay. to see it. <laughs> I'm not sure uh, if the if the numbers would, would suggest that that's a good idea. Um, that oh. said, there are a lot of places that really want the money that comes in from, from U.S. travel. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've been to Italy multiple times in the summer months. It is dominated by Americans. Uh, in most of the major cities and along the Malfi Coast, Capri, et cetera. Um, your prediction, if w w we do this call every week, but let's jump ahead two months. We're in August. We're in the middle of August. Will, we, will you be in, uh, have less restrictions or do you think more restrictions? I think it could be about the same. Um, because of this decentralization, the thing is, is that, you know, one of there is a report out that one of the reasons that cases spiked in Lombardy was that they were putting COVID patients in beds in nursing homes. Yeah. Um, that was on CNN, I think. And so that is really like, it's, you know, in hindsight, one of those things that w with what we know now, that's absolutely shocking. Right. But Lombardy is the place that had the biggest problem with with the spread and with deaths. I think they really didn't understand in containment and, and measures like that. So if we have certain level of containment measures like masks uh, for personal use, and we've got enough personal protective equipment for people who need it, do those, um, do those keep us protected enough that we can maintain? I, I think that that's possible. Given what I saw in terms of the kids playing together, in terms of us really walking around like life is normal, pretty much everyone just had the mask, either the, the neck warmer down, and didn't even go to touch it, or they had the two loops and then the mask around the, the neck. 
yesterday. Very few people had it actually on their face. Um, so it's one of those things that the here we might see a spike. Um, I think by August that could, you know, if you see a spike now next week or the week after, then you, you put up restrictions again. It's not like things went out of control for maybe six weeks to a month in Milan and sort of spread everywhere and nobody knew what was happening and people thought masks were for the paranoid, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's like, if we see a spike, okay, we've put masks on, maybe we go back to two meters. So it's hard to say because I would say I would have said before this new change on June 9th, yeah, it'll be we'll have more freedom. Now that I have a lot of freedom, it's possible it could go back a little bit. I don't think it's going to go back to being locked down the way we were. Yeah, the April restrictions, right? Yeah, March and April for us. Yeah. Uh, you always get the last word, Rebecca. What should Americans know about what's going on in Italy? You know, I think that this province here, Alto Adige Sud Tirol, is a very good experiment um, because we, you know, we opened up first with pretty strict mask rules, and our our numbers were great, and they were really amazing. A couple cases a day, a death or two a week, and as sad as that is, those are those are good numbers in terms of the crisis that a lot of people are living through. So if our new mask rules and our lax you know, mask rules, and this is again not countrywide, but out to Adige. If those result in people, uh, if those result in a spike in infections, then I think that that's pretty strong, uh, at least anecdotal evidence that that masks really work. And as uncomfortable as they are, that they are what's going to help us uh, save lives. And <laughs> I think Olympia got the last word with that slurp of her iced tea. <laughs> 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 Rebecca and Olympia, thank you both so much. Hopefully we'll hear from you next Friday as well. For everyone else, Dr. Michael Fine at 12 noon, Governor Raimondo's briefing at 1 o'clock, and everyone, please, please stay safe.